Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, July 1st, 2018. I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord. It is stifling here in New Jersey. It was over 100 degrees yesterday, and it's going up again today. And uh, as I saw, I said, well, our air conditioning is out so for the last few days, right through this heat wave. It, last night, it was 90 degrees in the bedroom. I had four fans on me. It was horrible. But, um, you know, if you wet yourself down, like, you know, you go in the shower, you wet yourself down, and you just stay calm on the bed with the fans, you know, you're okay. Um, I think that if the grid ever went down in this heat, we would be a goner, because you can't, you know, you, it's very difficult to take the, the heat, especially when the heat index is way above the um, the temperature. Anyway, uh, I um, pray to God to restore the air conditioning here, uh, hopefully, maybe tomorrow, um, if they get the part. All right, um, I'm going to be reading today in Job chapter 11 and uh, the theme in chapter 11 is um, who can know God and um, I like to say the our father so please join me our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen father i love you so much i thank you for my blessings and um all that you've given me in this ministry and the subscribers and all the friends that I've made, uh, Christian friends that I've made through the ministry, Father, I thank you for answering prayer and for healing and for all the wonderful things that you do, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, chapter 11, it says, Then answered so far the Namathite and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered, and should a man full of talk be justified should thy lies make men hold their peace and when thou mockest shall no man make thee ashamed for thou hast said my doctrine is pure and i am clean in thine eyes but oh that god would speak and open his lips against thee and that he would show thee secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exact, exact, exactic, exactic of thee, exactic of thee, less than thine iniquity deserve it. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as the heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell, what canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth and broader than the sea. So he's saying here that if we seek our Lord and we reach out to him, um, he will keep revealing himself and mysteries um, as far as the heaven, as high as the heaven and deeper as hell. There's no end to how much the Father can reveal to you. This is why being and abiding in Christ and letting the Holy Spirit 
transform you and teach you, it's never a boring life. Because there's always more to learn. It's, it's infinity. The learning is infinite. If he cut off and shut up or gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men, he seeth wickedness also, will he not then consider it? For vain man would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. If thou prepare thine heart, and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thy hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. And, you know, a tabernacle is a place of worship. Um, our vessel is a tabernacle, so he's very clearly saying let not the wickedness dwell in your vessel for then shalt thou lift up thy face without spot yea thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear yeah because you're not guilty of anything you know you know there's guilt there you know for a reason and god can work the guilt uh, to bring you towards him to repentance or Satan could use the guilt to condemn the hell out of you um, but anything could be used for good or for bad but it's there God made it for a reason because thou shalt forget thy misery and remember it as waters that pass away and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning. And thou shalt be secure, because there is hope, yea. Thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. That's pretty powerful, that last one. But thine eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost yeah when you give up the holy spirit and turn to your sin you're giving up the ghost aren't you you're giving up the ghost you're giving up the gift that god gave you when you came to him you give up the ghost and you turn to sin and you sin in your tabernacle in your vessel in your tent in your church You know, I wrote down some of the things that these once saved, always saved people throw at you to make, to try to intimidate you and make you feel like you're the bad guy. They will say, who are you to judge? That's one thing. They'll say, um, you're not showing enough love. That's another thing. Everyone sins every day. That's another thing. 
you're preaching hate and it turns people away that's another thing and we are all children of God well you know if that was true that last one then sinners would not be cast into hell no one would ever go into the lake of fire the lake of fire wouldn't even exist the reason that they could recite those things is because they don't know God they don't have the Holy Spirit they only have the world now the world's interpretation of who Jesus is because if they really really read their Bible they would see that our God is angry all the time with sin he's angry he's angry all the time with sin because it keeps going on and on and on and on and on even in the New Testament we see how angry he is with sin but you know sin doesn't get cast into the lake of fire people do people do and these people I have seen that they are the most grudge holding the most unforgiving the most double-minded people on the planet because they hold grudges they they refuse correction this is all narcissism this is all rooted in uh, self the self and may I add they hate righteous people they hate it they just despise anyone who has had victory in Christ who is whose uh, desires of the heart wish to be holy they don't like it because the holiness that you achieve through the ministry of the Holy Spirit shines light on their sin and then they hiss and they spit at you like a snake and they'll grudge hold you forever anyone who's gone up against any of these people will see that exact profile and the prophets that get messages they're all outlined about their their belief structure so you'll never hear God prophesy through them about sinners see because they lean towards their belief it makes you wonder are they really hearing from God see because if you read the Bible it doesn't say what they're saying what they're prophesying doesn't line up with the personality of God in the Bible it doesn't it doesn't uh, reflect a, a creator who can throw down plagues and fire and brimstone so are they really prophesying or is it Satan speaking through them something to think about and um, on that note I'll, I'm going to end it right here and say have a beautiful day in the Lord people I love you Jesus loves you never forget how much he loves you he's coming very soon but he's coming for someone whose heart uh, reflects everything that the Lord loves and despises everything that the Lord hates okay so if you're on the wrong side of the fence get on the right side of the fence now because we're running out of time god bless you and have a beautiful day